Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with bulgogi beef. That's right, I'm going to show you my take on what's generally referred to as Korean barbecue. Although many barbecue purists will claim this has nothing to do with real barbecue. But that's okay. The vast majority of people don't really care what barbecue purists think. They're usually more concerned with how good something tastes. And when it comes to this stuff, there is no issue in that department. This really is incredibly delicious. So let's go ahead and get started with the most important component. No, not the beef, the marinade. So in a large mixing bowl, we're going to start with some flavorful vegetation, including some crushed or finely minced garlic, and then a little bit of grated onion. And sure, if you want, I guess you could mince that really fine. But if you use a cheese grater for this, you're going to get more of a liquefied onion, which is really what we want here. Plus, who doesn't enjoy a good cry once in a while? And then speaking of grated, we'll also add some finely grated ginger. I did that on the microplane. We are also going to toss in some toasted sesame oil, as well as a spoon of brown sugar. Okay, so we have our aromatic, nutty, and sweet covered, which brings us to our salty element. So we'll toss in a generous splash of soy sauce, and none of that low sodium stuff. We want to go full sodium here. And then, of course, we're definitely going to want some heat, which we'll do in the form of Korean chili flakes, which goes by the name of, hold on, I wrote this down phonetically, gochu garo, gochu garo. I think that's pretty close, or not. So we'll go ahead and toss in a nice big spoon of Korean chili flakes. And then last but not least, another key ingredient. We are going to peel and grate in about a quarter of this Asian pear. I know it does look like an apple, but it is actually a kind of pear. And not only is that going to provide some additional sweet flavor, but there's actually an enzyme in the fruit that's going to tenderize our meat. So we'll go ahead and grate in a little bit of that. And then we will take our freakishly small wooden spoon and give that a stir because we are pretty much done with the marinade. So we'll stir that together and simply set that aside and go find some meat to slice. This magical marinade works beautifully with chicken, pork, and beef. And today I'm going to show you my personal favorite cut for this, which would be the boneless short rib which at my butcher at least is sold in these fairly well-trimmed chunks. You might see a little bit of fat and connective tissue here or there, but that's okay. And all we need to do to prep this is slice it up, but not too thin. I like to shoot for something between an eighth and a quarter inch. And by the way, in the blog post, I'm going to cover the two major variables here. How thin you slice your meat and how long you marinate it for. Okay, by tweaking those two things, you can get a vast array of different textures here. But like I said, I'm going to go for something about 3 eighths of an inch thick, since that's my personal preference. And as usual, we're going to slice across the grain if possible. Although, as you may be able to see, I think I did one piece with the grain. But that really didn't seem to cause any major problems. But generally, as a rule, we do want to slice across the grain. And then once that meat is sliced up, we'll go ahead and transfer it into our marinade and stir it together. Which you could do with your tongs or a spatula, but I really enjoy using my fingers. This feels surprisingly good. And I'm not at all embarrassed to admit that. It is strangely satisfying. Not to mention your fingers are always going to do a more thorough job here than any tongs or spatula. So we'll go ahead and give that a mix. At which point we want to cover this and pop in the fridge to marinate it. And how long is it going to be up to you? The accepted range would be from one hour to overnight. But I never let mine go that long. I'm a one or two hour guy. And again, I'm going to go into that on the blog. But my preference is to wrap that up and pop it in the fridge for about an hour or two at which point we're going to pull it out and prep it for the pan. And all that means is we're going to unwrap it and season it up with a little bit of salt. Some people will just add more soy in the beginning, but it's already a very wet marinade, so I do go with a little bit of salt at this point. And then to finish this up, we'll also add a little drizzle of vegetable oil, and we'll give that a quick toss with our tongs. And why not fingers this time? It's a good question. I got kind of tired of washing my hands. And once that's mixed up, we are ready to cook. And for me, the best choice is a smoking hot cast iron skillet that I'll brush with a little bit of oil, and we'll go ahead and transfer in our bulgogi beef into hopefully a single layer. If you're using more than a pound or so of beef, you want to do this in batches. And then what we'll do is cook this for about two or three minutes per side on the highest heat setting possible, and that's going to be it. And of course, that's an incredibly short cooking time for something that usually is braised for hours. But that is the magic of this marinade at work. We're going to get something tender and delicious in like five minutes. So just one of the many reasons I love this recipe. And of course, because this is such a wet marinade, you're probably not going to get a super awesome sear on this. But that's fine. You'll see when we plate up, it's going to be gorgeous. And having said that, you will get some caramelization around the edges. But anyway, to recap, we're going to give that first side a couple minutes, and then we'll flip that meat over, and then we'll go ahead and give that side a couple minutes. 
And I always know I'm getting close when the moisture in the pan kind of evaporates and it starts to smoke again. And yes, a well-ventilated kitchen with a fan is highly recommended. In fact, at the Korean restaurants where you do this table side, they have a fan right over the table. But anyway, we're going to cook that for about five minutes total, at which point we can turn off our heat and pull that out of the pan and we'll serve that up immediately on some steamed rice, which is being featured in my traditional Korean style plate, which by the way is also my Japanese style plate, Chinese style plate, Vietnamese style plate, and I believe also Indian style plate. So as you longtime viewers know, that plate gets around. But anyway, I'm going to pile up a nice generous portion of our beef, and then I'm going to finish up with some sliced green onions, as well as an extra touch of our Korean chili flakes, or as I attempted to pronounce earlier, gochugaro. And then if you want, you could also top with some sesame seeds, but I was out. But of course, that's up to you. You are the young MC of your bulgogi. And speaking of bust a move, one move I didn't bust was to pick up some kimchi at the store, which is pretty much mandatory on this plate. So I tried to Photoshop some in, but you know what, that was just not the same. So I was forced to serve this as is, and yes, I do like to give my guests a choice of chopsticks or a fork. Mostly so my guests using the fork can be shamed by the people using the chopsticks. It's all in good fun. So let me go ahead and grab the aforementioned sticks and go in for a taste. And that really is every bit as incredibly delicious as it looks. I mean, that marinade really is borderline magical. I mean, forget borderline, it's magical. To transform something as tough and chewy as beef short rib with just one hour of marination into something this tender and delicious... I think is pretty impressive. And something else that would be impressive is if I could get the rice and the meat in the same bite. I've really not perfected that move yet, but hey, I'm only 53. There's still plenty of time. Oh, and by the way, not that it needs it, but if you did want to splash a little water in there and deglaze that pan, you could serve this with some of those caramelized drippings. That's usually never a bad thing. To be honest, I usually don't, because it's so flavorful as is. That's actually going to benefit the rice much more than the meat. But anyway, that's it, my take on bulgogi beef, which as I mentioned is just as effective used with chicken or pork or pretty much any other animal we could catch and slice thinly, which really does include a lot of things. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.